most anticipated event on the planet is coming. And here it pops, we're all about L3. Every single match of Mexico's historic run.
you up to date with a little bit of action going on around the city as well. Uh, we also have a few thousand people uh, for the week.
And we're live at the International Indoor Soccer Complex here in Antioch, Tennessee, where Chattanooga FC about to take on Inter Nashville. Lucas Panzica here with you, Alex Poland right next to me. A big game, Fort CFC still trying to stay unbeaten in NPSL play. We have our starting lineups. Chattanooga FC, not too different from what they've typically been going with. In the back, this time you will see Soren Juhaszczyk back from injury, anchoring that defensive line with Everson Lima. Steven Rocca out at left back and Juan Sanchez at right back. Philip D'Amico in goal behind him. The midfield, again, similar to what you've seen with Pierre Bouquet, Juan Hernandez, and Daniel Valenciano. Up top, João Costa, Charlie Clark, and no Felipe Oliveira tonight. You'll actually have Santiago Moore starting on the wing in his place, and for international, starting in goal, Stephen Lunny. They're back for Patrick Farrell, Rich Reichenberger, Frank Down, Daniel Sassano, Greg Warden in that defensive midfield, Leonardo Ferreira, Victor Sato in front of him, Andrew Chamberlain on the right wing, Christian Gomez on the left, and Ivan Saku, their leading goal scorer and star striker up top, going to kick things off for us here in Antioch. Alex, Chattanooga FC, again, still unbeaten in CFC play, and this is a tough test. International team that they're very familiar with, even though they were not in the NPSL until last year, but they've come onto the scene, won the entire conference in their first season, and Chattanooga's playing them for the fourth or fifth time. Right, and with Nashville, as you said, it's a familiar team, it's an interstate rivalry, we got the volunteer shield up for grabs here. This is going to be a game that Chattanooga will really, really want to win, especially with Nashville being the team that put them out of the postseason last season. So starting things off for us in the early stages of this game, Pierre Bouquet already intercepted early on by Ferreira, but it's back at the feet of Steven Rocca. Trying to switch it out wide is Victor Sato. Daniel Sassano. Lifted in, already looking for Andrew Chamberlain on the right wing. He's got control of it in front of D'Amico. Backtracks a little bit. D'Amico has to get back to his line. He floats it in, and Saku sticks a leg out. He's going to get whistled for that. It's a high kick. Coming in high with that leg up high. But International already a goal-scoring threat, and we're not even two minutes into this game, Alex. They've got threats all over the place. Of course, Ivan Saku is the leading goal scorer with four goals. Actually is down right now, getting looked at. Yeah, and Nashville has been very explosive in this first couple of minutes, and that might be due to Chattanooga's um, lack of energy. They're very tired. A lot of the players are doing camps of a morning for the kids. They had a very long string of, I believe, five away matches in a row. Almost finished up now. So a lot of the tired legs for Chattanooga, and that could be why Nashville is looking so punchy out of the gate today. Yeah, Coach Elliott definitely mentioned it as they're still looking at Saku down there at the six-yard box. Again, International came in hot, and Saku came in with that high kick. He's going to get... Try to get helped up here, it looks like. He's on his feet. Looks like he's going to stay in the game. He has to come off, though, because the trainers have went on the field. Yeah, he'll come off for a little bit, so Nashville will play with 10 men. Don't have a sub lined up for him, so looks like Saku will stay in. And that's a close one for International, because that's somebody that they need. Then they're a consistent goal-scoring threat, kind of like Charlie Clark has for CFC, but on International's side. And in saying that, if, for instance, Chattanooga lost someone like Charlie Clark, that would bring a big hurt to their team because of what a, uh, the threat that they're bringing up front. And for Nashville, he's doing the same exact thing. So to lose him this early is not good for Nashville. But we're going to kind of get restarted here. Starting out in the back with Soren U.S. check. No, we're going to have to start all over again. Back at Tomiko's feet. All right, here we go. U.S. check back for CFC after a hiatus due to injury. Pierre Bouquet getting pressured. And 
Juhas check. His first ball up the line floats out of bounds for an international throw. Christian Gomez, ball at his feet. Pato, as he's known with the international fans. <laughs> Out to Farrell, back into Tosado. Looking backwards for Frank Downs, he's going to send it back to Stephen Nunny, the goalkeeper. And here's Daniel Sassano, going to try to switch the field over to Andrew Chamberlain. Chamberlain a cutback, but too big of a touch, and is taken away by Pierre Bouquet, who tries to find Juan Hernandez, and is back with International FC. Chamberlain trying to lay it off for Leonardo Ferreira. Out of bounds for a CFC throw in. And now Bouquet will switch the field. Juan Sanchez. We saw Sanchez playing in the center of that defense against the Emerald Force in Knoxville, but he is out at right back today with the return of Soren Juoscek. Here's Daniel Sassano for Internashville. Christian Gomez. Valenciano touches it to Bouquet, who tries to find Juan Costa. But Patrick Farrell controls it. Sato out to Chamberlain. Plays it on the ground to Ferreira. Ferreira's going to try a shot and it's blocked. And it's cleared out of play. Another international throw in. Nice move there by Ferreira to get to Chamberlain, but Chamberlain will lose it to Rocca. And Juan Hernandez has to clear it up field for Chattanooga. Charlie Clark. Heads it to Santiago and Lima, trying to play the one touch back to Clark. Chattanooga has yet to form any kind of attack in this game. Nashville posing a threat early, only in the sixth minute here in Antioch, Tennessee. Lifting it to Christian Gomez, and it's out of bounds. Christian Gomez, that's a guy that they're going to be looking for a lot. Talking to head coach Richard Askey of International before the game, when I asked him, give me one name that Chattanooga fans need to be aware of. He said that's Christian Gomez, known as Pato among their fan base. And Charlie Clark playing it into Juan Costa, and he has a shot, but it's blocked. Was patient there for the ball. Shot was blocked off and cleared out by International. But Soren Juhaszczyk trying to head it back, and it's out of bounds. But Christian Gomez out on the left wing for International, the 18-year-old, he's a local kid from Antioch, Antioch High School, has come onto the scene for International, didn't score his first career goal with the club until their last game, which was against the Atlanta Silverbacks, was a draw here in Antioch. But he's got speed, he's got pace, he can dribble going to be a real threat on the left wing for International. And that's not to say that Andrew Chamberlain can't do the same thing on the right. Ivan Sacco in the middle of their attack. This is a potent attacking threat that Chattanooga will be facing. And you were mentioning speed and dribbling. I would say the dribbling would be most effective here with how short the field is lengthwise. There's not a lot of length to this field. It's extremely short compared to Chattanooga's home field. And speed in that situation isn't going to do as much as having a good touch, being able to get past defenders because of the uh, lack of leap to this field. Ball going to be played out to Charlie Clark. He has a little bit of space. He's going to take it himself, looking for that far post. Just drifts over the crossbar. Then Chattanooga FC having their turn at Stephen Nunny's goal. Excuse me, Stephen Lunny's goal. Out 
at the feet of Juan Hernandez. Gets away from the double team. And Pierre Bouquet sends it back to Everson Lima. Pierre Bouquet. Plays the one-two with Santiago. Sends it in looking for Juan Costa. It's a great ball. But his touch sends it over the crossbar. So Jerome Costa had two of Chattanooga's best chances of the game so far. Doesn't put it in the back of the net. In the 10th minute here. In Antioch. Like we said, International coming off of that 2-2 two -two draw against the Atlanta Silverbacks. And Chattanooga, Alex, you mentioned it, in the midst of this five-game streak of away game. Also coming off of the draw at Greenville. That score was 1-1. One one. And Joan Costa up the left side. Going to try to cut it back and look for Charlie Clark, but it's blocked off. And you mentioned the... Uh, previous Chattanooga game at Greenville, they gave up a very, very late goal in that game. And that's probably due to the fatigue of most of the players from their morning count and playing five away games in a row, this being the fourth of those five. So that could be a very big factor in this match, and you may see a lot of late goals because of that. Yeah, something Coach Bill Elliott talked about before the game when I asked them how they're feeling leading up to this, his answer was tired. Like we said, five straight road games. A lot of these times they do the trip in one day. To Greenville, it was four hours there, four hours back in the same day. And like you said, Alex, a lot of these guys are doing those camps. It's summer in the mornings when it's blazing hot. And they're just exhausted. But that's not to say international is not in the same way, but that's definitely a factor here when you're talking about the stamina of a group that, to be honest, you see a lot of the same in the starting 11 for Chattanooga, game in and game out, which is what has led to a lot of their success this season. But yeah, you asked Coach Elliott how they're feeling today, his answer was tired. And with them keeping the same starting 11, it may seem to most people like they're almost hesitant to play the people on their bench. But in reality, Chattanooga has so much depth on their bench. They have people like Zeka, for instance, that they can bring on that can be an attacking threat. People like that can bring on that, those fresh legs in a late part of the match. Could be very, very good for Chattanooga, especially if International is also feeling pretty tired. Chattanooga playing the ball in the air out of the back a good bit today. Valenciano out to Sanchez and into Hernandez. The one-two between Hernandez and Charlie Clark ends up at the feet of Tosado. And you don't need to have to tell Chattanooga FC fans how important Juan Hernandez is to this team. He's their rock in the midfield. Saw him score a beautiful goal in the last game that we did, Alex, in Knoxville. Yeah, one is a true midfielder. He controls the game. He controls possession. A lot of the time, if Chattanooga's going on an attack, it's coming off of his feet. And to have someone like that for Chattanooga, being able to play in games like tonight, is a very, very good thing. And could potentially lead to a lot of forward success. Juan Costa settles the long ball and regains possession. And his pass is intercepted. Now here's Christian Gomez, the 18-year-old from Antioch. Going to take it into his midfield and go out looking for Chamberlain. Somehow ends up at Chamberlain's feet. He'll have a crack at it, but Steven Rocco, great sliding tackle to force the corner kick. And you were mentioning Gomez earlier. With him being only 18, the inexperience could be a big factor here. With him going against people like Lima, who are extremely experienced, 
and you might may make some childish mistakes, which so is almost to be expected for a kid of his age, but also could bring that he has that more energy, he's fresher, he's not as fatigued as most of the guys are because of their age, so there's pros and cons of playing people at that young of an age. Barrera, the header to the near post. But Philip D'Amico is all over it, and Chattanooga FC will start over. Hernandez, an awkward touch, can't gain control of it. And Christian Gomez will have to track it down near the goal line. Somehow that ball stays in. And Pierre Bouquet is fouled by Daniel Sassano. Chad Hooligans, as usual, out in full force here in Antioch. Rocca takes his eye off in just a second, and Nashville try to build another attack off of this throw-in. 15th minute here, no score at International Indoor Soccer Complex. Bouquet touches it upfield. The International has done a great job applying that pressure in the midfield on Juan Hernandez, Pierre Bouquet, and Daniel Valenciano. Lima will switch it to the feet of Steven Rocca. He'll go up to the left with Jerome Costa. He's been Chattanooga's best threat so far. Goes near post, saved by Lunny. Sato, down to Chamberlain. Goes out, it'll be CFC ball. No, Nashville ball. No, CFC ball. Some confusion here. <laughs> ball controlled at the top of the box by Charlie Clark. Santiago has a crack at it. All the fans of the sport are very quick to blame the referees for missed calls and stuff. And if you put yourself in that same position, they don't see the whole field. They can't really call everything. And there are, in some occasions, confusion like we just had. But uh, I would say cut the rest some slack here. It's, it's a very hard position to be in. Everson Lima has to clean up Christian Gomez's run. And Juan Costa is going to play Pierre Bouquet out to the left. Okay, one-on-one -on -one with Farrell. But back with Andrew Chamberlain, and International will try to counterattack. Ferreira has plenty of space in the midfield. Looking for Saku, good ball into the box, but it's taken away by U.S. Jack. It's Asano. Ferreira tries the one-on-one -on -one with Valenciano. Doesn't work. He's back with Juan Costa. Costa streaking down the left. Does a bit too much with it. And Tosado kicks it away. We mentioned earlier the size difference of the field. And with that, these throws right next to the touch line are going to be basically crosses. Yeah. So these could turn into very, very good scoring opportunities. Rocco will try to do that now. It's just what you said. Right into Charlie Clark. Doesn't get enough on it. And Valenciano going to go the long shot. Skies it over the bar. Chattanooga right now, having played six games, sits at the top of the Southeast Conference. 
International, two spots behind them in third. Luciano heads it back to Lima. And Juan Hernandez swings it around looking for Costa, but ends up with Patrick Farrell. Chamberlain fighting Pierre Bouquet, and Bouquet called for the foul. Now Chamberlain will be slow to get up near the touch line. Leonardo Ferreira looks like he's going to swing this one in for international. to put it back in play. Valenciano fighting two international midfielders. But it goes out to Juan Sanchez. Barton Santiago pinging it around. Hernandez to U.S. Tech, to Bouquet, and back to Rocca. Some good team passing by CFC right now. Duong Costa touches it inside and swings it around to Juan Sanchez. See what Chattanooga can make of this possession. Hernandez to Rocca. Back to Hernandez. Chipped over to Pierre Bouquet. Bouquet going up against Patrick Farrell. Good work defensively by Farrell and it's back with International. Greg Warden. Muscles it away from Charlie Clark and Stephen Lunny is going to boot it up field. Greg Warden, huge presence for International in the midfield. I assume you're going to see him play the full 90 today. And don't be shocked when you see him try one from long range. Scored that equalizer in the 90th minute against Atlanta on a free kick from outside the box. He is a mainstay in this International midfield. And here's Saku. Going in for Warden, but Valenciano does well defensively, and now Juan Costa down the left side again, and it's good tackle by Patrick Farrell to force the corner. Costa looked like he had him beat, and Farrell goes in for the slide, and Chattanooga will take their first corner kick of the match. Juan Costa will take it. Swings it in, contact made by Pierre Bouquet, saved at the goal line. And Juan Hernandez is going to take it to the goal line to try to send it in. It's another corner kick for Chattanooga. Talk about the amount of aerial threats Chattanooga has on this team. Valenciano, Everson, Lima, Pierre Bouquet, Charlie Clark. I was watching the team walk out and a lot of the Chattanooga players are very, very tall. So, any set piece where they can get a ball into the ball will be Counter-attack from International. Sassano under pressure from Hernandez. Well done by Hernandez. Forces the corner kick. is going to take the corner, headed out by Hernandez, and Jerome Costa plays with Charlie Clark. Clark has nowhere to go. And here's Santiago. Now 
on you out check out to Steven Rocca. Desado. For International. Pereira. The one two with Saku. And out to Christian Gomez. Another good tackle by Juan Hernandez, and the foul is forced on Gomez by Santiago. Hernandez doing a lot of that cleanup duty. Juan Costa in for Charlie Clark. Back to Duque. Evan Sanchez at Santiago. He's going to whip it in. And it flies over Lenny's goal. Lunny's goal kick ends up with Desado, the champion, tackled by Steven Rocca. Greg Warden. Cuts off Santiago's pass. Game has slowed down a little bit here in the 26th minute. International opened it up the first couple minutes with a flurry of attacks on Philip D'Amico's goal. But we're still scoreless here in Antioch. And here's Daniel Valenciano, Steven Rocca. Sanchez controls it. Clark on the 18-yard line. Excuse me. 18-yard box. Back to Rocca. And cleared away by International. A lot of noise here. That international indoor soccer complex. Unfortunately, we do not have a nice media booth back in no. the uh, Stanley Stadium. So, yeah, it's very loud, and you probably hear a lot of the noise that's being produced by the fans. But it shows that there's a nice atmosphere here, at least. Ranked down for international. Haven't seen the ball at his feet too much so far today. talk about Chattanooga FC in this long stretch of road game and you know how tired the team is right now We're looking at international only three subs on their bench so you have that advantage in Chattanooga with the depth and we've talked about it Chattanooga could argue more depth than any other team in the NPSL saying that all of their subs are very class players as well. You don't have any bodies that I'm aware Charlie of. Charlie Clark shot on goal saved by Stephen Lunny. You don't have anybody that I'm aware of that's necessarily a bad player on the side of the bench. So to have that depth and have good players like that that they can sub in is a very, very beneficial thing for Chattanooga. Especially on games like tonight and the next match in New Orleans. Rich Reichenberger, Frank down, flipping it to Daniel Sassano. And going deep to Andrew Chamberlain, but he can't get the touchdown. And it goes out for the Chattanooga throw. So 
Charlie Clark shields down and it's 2v3 for Chattanooga. Clark's going to be patient with it. Give it out to Santiago. Back into Clark, but he can't get the touch. Santiago with the shot. Now Juan Hernandez out to Sanchez. Who floats it in, looking for Clark and the header. Just goes over the goal line. There's Charlie Clark. He's starting to emerge a little bit for CFC. Saw him force a Stephen Lund save, and that header goes out for a Nashville goal kick. Interesting to me to see the differences in Nashville and Chattanooga's play. Chattanooga is very much about getting the ball on the wing, crossing it in, and getting ahead to it, whereas Nashville wants to be very direct through the middle type play. Charlie Clark doesn't have enough on it. Looks like he has Juan Costa on a run. Put the flick on, doesn't have enough power. And now Saku. Soren U.S. check all over him and he's called for the foul. So far that CFC back line, as reliable as it's been all year, has only allowed six goals, which is good for the best in the Southeast Conference Division in the NPSL. Also tied for the second most goals scored with 13 is Chattanooga. So a pretty balanced team, you could say, under Coach Bill Elliott. Barrera's free kick goes right into the hands of Philip D'Amico. International, meanwhile, shown they can score goals. Same amount of goals as Chattanooga with 13 on the year, but also have allowed 13. So Chattanooga FC looking to split open that back line today. Already seen a few good chances from Joan Costa and Charlie Clark. Masado trying to play that ball to Saku, but Everson Lima all over it. And Joan Costa now taking on Patrick Farrell. Just giving it back to Pierre Bouquet. And now to Juan Sanchez. Everson Lima again. He sees Juan Hernandez down the left side. Great ball. Chested down. Can't get it to the goal line. It's cleared out by Andrew Chamberlain. Another Chattanooga corner kick. And with the corners and crosses and long throws from right close to the 18. Chattanooga has been very, very dangerous in the air. So I want to see any corner, any free kick in this area that's swung in to be a big threat on goal like that, nearly going in there. Charlie Clark again getting a head on it. Not happy with himself. You gotta think he will be eager to pull one in the back of the net after those chances. 33rd minute, we're still scoreless. Again, this international FC defense has allowed 13 goals in this NPSL season. I'm sure that's a stat they wouldn't like you sharing, but that's a stat, and we have to share them so people know. Valenciano back to U.S. check. Out wide to Sanchez. Santiago Muro has space down the right line. But drops it back to Sanchez and drops it back to Valenciano. Back over the top to Sanchez. Can he get to the goal line? Yes. It's in the box. Juan Hernandez has it at his feet. Gonna try a shot on goal. We've seen him score from there before, but it's blocked. And Juan wins it back. He's gonna take it himself again. 
shot blocked by Frank Down. And great footwork there by one in the box. Uh, watching the video, it was an interview with uh, Oliveira over the week. And he said that the most technically skilled player was Juan Hernandez. So look for him to be very, very calm and collected and extremely good when the ball's out of speed. Juan Costa making some moves in the midfield. Charlie Clark can't muscle Frank down for the ball. But it's going to be another Chattanooga throw. Yeah, and Hernandez, of course, not short of experience, as we know. Only in his fourth season with Chattanooga FC, but feels like he's been here longer than that. Just the presence that he has with this team. Joan Costa. The ball goes right by Santiago Moore's head. And Nashville will try to counterattack. Breakdown. Gotta think, if International goes into this half scoreless, Stephen Lundy at least will be breathing a sigh of relief with the chances that Chattanooga seen in front of his goal. Of course, that being said, International has been no slouch either. As Lima clears it out, back at the feet of Andrew Chamberlain. As far as offensive, or, yeah, offensive presence go, I just see a break here. Here's Charlie Clark. Have to take himself to the far post and just drifts past it. Very, very Another close, close call for Charlie Clark. And as I was saying, as far as offensive presence go, I believe Nashville and Chattanooga are very evenly matched in the chances they've created so far and the amount of pressure they've been putting on. So I think this match, personally I think this match will come down to a battle of defenses. And from the show of it at the moment, Chattanooga's got the much better defense. So I see that being a factor later on during the match. Yeah, Chattanooga. Hard to argue that they have that advantage against most of the teams they'll play in this NPSL season. Now, Juan Costa, well done by Frank Down coming in from behind, and Lenny not able to save the corner kick, so will be another chance for Chattanooga to put ahead on it and try to take the lead before we get the 45-minute mark in this match. He's going to go in for Juan Hernandez. He's looking for Charlie Clark. Batted backwards in his sworn U.S. check, who ended up rising up. But it's easy enough for Stephen Lunny to gather. Now Greg Warden. Patrick Farrell. Saku closed off by Juan Sanchez coming in from his right back position. Chamberlain exchanging passes with Ferreira, but it's out for a Chattanooga throw. And Rocker goes down the line. Frank down, going back to Stephen Lunny. And out to Riz Reisenberger. And with Victor Casado. <laughs> Trying to go over the top for Sassano. In Nashville, though, they did it in the first few minutes of this game. 
hasn't seemed to be able to break through this back four since then. Clark lays it off for Hernandez. He's going to turn it around, switch the field for Rocca and Joan Costa. Cuts it back in. Again, too big a touch. Getting physical here around midfield. Chattanooga will be called for the foul. It was Ivan Saku who went down. Shawon Costa trying to help him up, but Saku not having it. He's gone down a couple of times in this game. Greg Warden for Pereira. Masano looking for Gomez. Chattanooga also done a great job of shutting down Gomez. They realize he's going to be their most dangerous threat on the wing and they've neutralized him so far yeah they were putting two three men on just him when he's on the ball and that for any person at any level that's going to be very hard to get through so props to the CFC for noticing that and addressing it as they have Rosado heading and looking for Saku Valenciano going to start things off for Chattanooga on this possession. Juan Hernandez. U.S. check going long for Juan Costa. Settles it. Plays the 1-2 with Valenciano. Costa. Trying to maintain control this time. Valenciano's shot. Deflected. And goes in. Chattanooga takes the lead. A 1-2 between Valenciano and Jerome Costa. Valenciano going for the far post. The shot goes off. Looked like an international defender. And Chattanooga has the lead here in Antioch in the 42nd minute. That goal from Valenciano, his third on the year. All about the right positioning there. He was where he needed to be to clean up and maybe a lucky deflection, but either way, it was a good shot on target. Puts it in the back of the net. CFC is up 1-0. Now here's Christian Gomez. Looking for a corner, but it's a goal kick for Philip D'Amico. Chattanooga finally breaks through. Juan Costa making those runs down the left side finally pays off as Valenciano makes his way into the box. And Valenciano, another guy who just put in shift after shift for CFC this season. And it's been good to see it pay off with a few goals yeah, in that defensive midfielder role. He's a very large presence in that defensive midfielder role. And what you need as a defensive mid, he's he has that physicality, he has the height and stuff, he can get his head to the crosses, and he knows his positioning very well, judging from that previous goal. Philip D'Amico going to go ahead and put it into the box see if Chattanooga can extend their lead at all before going into this half. About two minutes and some change before we hear the whistle. Shoulder into the back of Steven Rocca gets called and it's Chattanooga free kick.
good thing the referee is calling what he is, because I believe if the referee was a lot more lenient on the tackles, this could turn into a very, very nasty match very quickly. With both teams showing very strong physical presences, and looks like frustrations are arriving just as Taz is for Nashville, so referee is good on them. Charlie Clark chested down, and the shot on goal saved corner kick for Chattanooga. And he has just come oh so close in this first half to scoring. But Chattanooga here in the 45th minute going to send another one into the box. And you know Clark's going to be fighting for this one. Yeah, it's nice to see that he is so hungry for a goal. He has a good amount so far this season, but having that hunger so far. Ball in by Costa, headed by Lima, it looked like and out for another goal kick as we get close to halftime here. <laughs> and Frank down, going over the top. Headed out by U.S. check for Pereira. Now Gomez gonna go a long shot, saved by Philip D'Amico. There's his first real opportunity of the game, and D'Amico takes care of it. We've hit the 45-minute mark to see how much longer our official will give us here. I mean, we give a lot of credit to the CFC back line, but D'Amico is a very, very good goalkeeper as well. And the chances that the CFC back line do allow on goal He's always there cleaning them up, so Clark as well. Barrel puts this one in, Saku, the one-time volley. Goes off, out, but not by that much. Headed on by Charlie Clark. And goes out off the foot of Pierre Bouquet. Andrew Chamberlain now. International, if they want to do something, probably will have to do it quick. We're at a minute and a half of stoppage time. Over the top looking for Greg Warden. And there's your whistle. Halftime here in Antioch. Chattanooga FC leads one to nothing off the goal from Daniel Valenciano. Was a hard fought first half.
Alex, um, we're going to flip what's the zoom cam and what is the wide cam. Yep. So, flip the, uh, actually no, we're going to flip the Seems like we've got some technical difficulties out here in Antioch. Trying to work with it so we can make this live stream a little better for you guys. Again, appreciate you all tuning in. Chattanooga FC, a one goal lead off of Daniel Valenciano's goal, deflected in by an international defender. Chattanooga sitting at the top of the NPSL Southeast Division. International two spots behind in third. And CFC looking to stay unbeaten this year in NPSL play.
Welcome back here as we're getting ready for the second half at Indoor International, excuse me, International Indoor Soccer Complex in Antioch, Tennessee. We apologize for that first half. The technical difficulties there with the sound. Probably didn't hear a word we were saying up here. But it was beautiful. It was beautiful. We think it's fixed. And Chattanooga FC is about to go into this second half against International with a one goal lead off of Daniel Valenciano's goal, deflecting off the International defender. they can hear you. Yeah, that's back up. Okay, yeah, that did it. Woohoo! No, this is really high. What? It's not up? Okay. Oh, no, that's, that's good. That's fine. Awesome. But it's like constantly on. I'm not saying anything. But he's got the mic up, though, I think. Go ahead and turn your mic down for a second. And then we're back here for the second half at International Indoor Soccer Complex for the thousandth, thousandth time. But I think we're good to go here. Had some major technical difficulties with the sound in that first half. Didn't detract from the great soccer that Chattanooga FC played, leading 1-0 on the Daniel Valenciano goal. If you didn't hear me say it, should be back and good to know now. Please let us know uh, there in the comments if anything sounds off with the audio. I'm Lucas Panzica. I'm with Alan Pullen. Really appreciate you all joining in. Chattahooligans kicking off the second half here in Antioch, Tennessee. Chattanooga FC up one to nothing. The Chattahooligans are out in full force. Daniel Valenciano putting Bill Elliott's squad ahead towards the end of that first half. Charlie Clark standing over the ball now and we're up and running in the second half. Chattanooga FC against International FC. Everson Lima with the ball in the back. Going long for Jawan Costa on the left side. His touch keeps it in, but it goes to an international defender's foot. And Jawan Costa, that left side of the field, I mean, the Chattanooga really took advantage of that in the first half. Ended up paying off with the one-two between him and Valenciano, resulting in a goal. Yeah, Jawan Costa's running his wing as he usually does, extremely quick. Good touch on the ball as well. So, very well-rounded threat there for Chattanooga. Now here's Pereira for International. Cleared away. Back to the feet of Daniel Sassano. Frank down. Chamberlain tries to whip it in, collected by Philip D'Amico. We talked about the goal scoring threats a lot in the first half on this international team. Ivan Saku, their number nine starting striker, four goals on the year. He's their leading scorer. And of course, Christian Gomez making his first start of the NPSL season. On the left wing, only 18 years old, but a real talent for Internashville. And they're hoping for him to have a real coming out party, but against this CFC defense, it's been hard to come by, and they've done a good job of shutting him down. Yeah, they're having, when he gets into the wide area with the ball, they're putting two, three men on him, 
shutting him down, not letting him do anything, and that plus his inexperience, you said yourself it was his first NPSL start, those two things combined are going to cause a lot of trouble for him and make it very, very hard for him to do anything in the attacking third. out for a Chattanooga goal kick. And it looks like we have a change here. The first sub for either team coming in at halftime. Richmond Taylor. Looked like he took out Greg Warden in that defensive midfield role for Internashville. So here's Charlie Clark. Almost broke through in that first half. Had four, five, or six real clear-cut chances in front of the goal. And clearly was upset with himself for not putting one in the back of the net. He's going to be hungry in this second half to extend this lead. And for Chattanooga, that's a very, very good thing. Having their one of their top goal scorers, if not their top goal scorer this season, goal hungry during a match could not be a bad mix. And... I would look for him to be forward in a lot of occasions, get a lot of touches on the ball, and get a lot of good shots in. I have to correct myself, it was not Barlow who came off for International, it was actually Patrick Farrell at right back. So National switching some things around. Juan Hernandez. Up here, Bouquet, gonna switch the field all the way across to Juan Sanchez. Beats Taylor to it, flicks it up. Great touch to keep it in, plays it across the net. Nobody there for Chattanooga to put it in the back. And it's cleared away by Andrew Chamberlain. But there's Chattanooga's first real attack of the second half. They'll keep it going here. Pierre Bouquet. Trying to find Valenciano at the top of the box. And Saku. DCUS check on the header, but it's cleaned up by Everson Lima. Interesting no call there, brother. Ed. It looked to me like a foul from here, but it's the ref's discretion. He decided to not call anything, so we have to go with his word. But the Chattanooga bench especially very unpleased with that no call. So Leonardo Ferreira going to take the corner for Internashville. Headed out by Valenciano and Juan Costa on the break here for Chattanooga. They don't have the numbers, but they've got the speed. Costa cuts it back, sends his man to the ground. Tries to finish it with a goal, deflected, but it'll go out for a corner. And Juan Costa has Daniel Sassano reeling with that move that he put on him. Couldn't finish it off, but wins the corner for CFC. It's a very, very nice cut there. Xavier Costa, you have to be a bit gutted that you didn't score, but also very happy putting a player to the ground like that. And looks to whip in a decent ball here for the corner. Juan Costa, floating it in, a good ball, but it's punched away by Lunny. And you're going to have a foul on CFC, a free kick at the six yard box. Let's it go for Warden. Uhas check, clears it out. This Chattanooga back line, Alex. Again, we mentioned it in the first half. Of course, we didn't have audio in the first half yeah. as a long shot by Ferreira. And D'Amico safely watches it go past his goal, but only six goals allowed by Chattanooga 
in this NPSL season so far. That's good for the best in the NPSL Southeast. A huge reason why Chattanooga is at the top of this table right now. An international, they can score the goal. They've got the threats, but 13 goals allowed. That's as many as they've scored. And that goal differential is not going to help you out, especially when it comes down to a situation where that's going to decide what gets you into the NPSL playoffs or not. Right, yeah, and Chattanooga's back line has been a key factor of this team through every match so far this year. And especially in this one, they've been extremely strong. They've controlled most of the chances that Nashville's tried to create and have looked solid so far this match. Pierre Bouquet chasing to the corner flag. Dropping it back for Steven Rocco, who struggles with it against Andrew Chamberlain. Chamberlain eventually wins the throw in. Now here's Christian Gomez. Nice move to get it out to Taylor, but it's intercepted. And Taylor wins it back for Internashville. Drops it to Sasano. Back to Lunny. Nashville trying to build some possession here. Out to Frank down. And coming back here to the left side. Starting to string together some passes here. Saku going to take it himself on the ground, but D'Amico had it covered, watches it roll right past him. And Saku, another guy you can tell, getting frustrated. It's been a physical game, and these two teams know each other, Alex. And even though 2017 was International's inaugural NPSL season, they went out and they won the conference, and they knocked Chattanooga out of the playoffs. So Chattanooga, no stranger to this team. And they're playing them today, and they'll be playing them again on the 4th of July. Yeah, Chattanooga, they're going to be out for some revenge after that. Being the first meetup between the two clubs this season. And not only that, you have the standings to play for. You also have the Volunteer Shield to play for, which Chattanooga lost last year. So they'll be looking to win that and bring that back home. And this is the only team they have to beat to do that. And the fact that Knoxville is now out of contention for it. Another thing we mentioned several times in the first half is Chattanooga team in the middle of a five game streak where they are all on the road and they're just exhausted. Bill Elliott said it to me before the game. Asked how they were feeling coming into this and he said tired. A lot of these guys have to do camps every morning. They have to come to practice. They have to be on the road. And when the schedule sets up this way, you've got a very fatigued team, especially when you're using a lot of the same guys in the starting 11. Yeah, and that's going to be hard on Chattanooga, but it is the starting 11 staying the same, pretty much. They have so much depth on the bench, though, that they can bring on. And for Chattanooga, that's a very good thing to have. And you'll probably see it used later on in this match. Yeah, only one sub in this game so far, and it was made by Internashville. Richard Taylor coming on for Patrick Farrell. Victor Sato. Headed down by Everson Lima, and it's with Daniel Valenciano. This international team mentioned them only having three subs. Already seeing them have to move around a little bit. Greg Warden, a staple in that defensive midfield, moved out to right back with the substitution of Patrick Farrell, and you saw Richard Taylor come in at the defensive midfield position, something that they really have to do with only three subs. That's interesting to see the home team only have three subs. Most of the time, when you're the home team, you're going to have that advantage. You have all your players here usually, 
and we don't quite know all of Nashville's story based on that, and I know they're trying to bring in a lot of uh, members of the Nashville SC USL team on loan, but they couldn't get everything out with the team correctly, so the chance goes begging there. So Nashville might not have the personnel they want to have on the field at the moment, or on the bench, and it's still, it, it's really intriguing to me to see they only have three subs when they are the home team. They can bring whoever they want to the pitch, essentially. And Chattanooga outnumbering them in subs by quite a bit. But yeah, we were fully expecting them to have those loanees from Nashville SC, which, you know, admittedly would probably cause some concern for Bill Elliott bringing in those guys. Uh, for a club that's about to be an MLS club next season, but according to Coach Richard Askey of International FC, they were not registered in time and not available for this game. Could have been a huge help to International FC. Of course, we don't know who they would have brought on. Can't imagine it would have been Nashville FC's full-time starters as Ivan Sacco trying to track down the through ball. And it's played out of bounds by Philip D'Amico, but trying to make a quick play on it here, International is and is cleared away safely by Chattanooga FC. Ferreira loses track of the ball, but plays the chip in looking for Sacco again. Sacco plays it back inside. The ball was They're gonna say it's a goal kick. Yeah. And you were mentioning uh, National SC earlier being uh, an MLS team next year. Players of that caliber are already on that squad think of how well like rounded their reserves would be and how good the players they would be to go on loan to a club like this. It would have brought some real trouble to the Chattanooga back line. And it might have seen a completely different scoreline, we never know. Tested by Juan Sanchez, looking for Juan Costa. Valenciano going to take another shot. And it's well saved by Stephen Lunny. Valenciano going down as he shot it, but that was a laser into the hands of Stephen Lunny, and it stays 1-0 Chattanooga. For a sliding shot like that, it was a very, very good chance. And he was appealing for a foul there. I didn't really see the contact, but if he did get the free kick, that would have been a very dangerous area. Juan Hernandez and Richard Taylor. Some physical play there, and the foul looked like it was originally called on Hernandez, but he's the one down holding his ankle. And our official here is going to call up Richard Taylor. We're going to see our first card of this game. Yellow card for Richard Taylor. I guess the way he retaliated against Juan Hernandez. That's a big thing the refs look for is the retaliation. The initial foul probably would have been called against Chattanooga, but it looked like he kind of scissored Juan's legs there in a retaliation. So Chattanooga gets the free kick and Nash will receive a yellow card for that. Hernandez back on his feet, something CFC fans will love to see. And Everson Lima is going to start us off with this free kick. Looking for Sacco again. Here's Gomez. Gomez. Ball still at his feet. Drops it to Taylor, who's going to send it into the box. Chattanooga with an opportunity to clear it. They don't get it done. Ball pinging around, and we're going to play on here. Ferreira, a shot on goal, but it's wide open net, and it's cleared out. A nervy moment there for CFC. Saw a couple guys go down. Referee held on to his whistle, and Ferreira had a shot well saved by D'Amico. And the cleanup there, just as important as the save. Ferreira tries to turn it around. Well done to keep possession. And that one's going to be called Richard Taylor sliding in. And it's Juan Hernandez on the ground again. I, 
highly doubt this will be a second yellow card, but it was a very nasty tackle, and Coach Bill Elliott's very heated about that on the bench. He came in strong. Came in strong, and Juan Hernandez still down. It looks to me almost like Nashville's targeting Hernandez here. It, it might not be that way, I'm not for sure, but it, from the two very, very hard tackles there, it could very well be that. And if that's the case, it's kind of dirty tactics from Nashville, but they might see that as a last resort because Juan is creating so many chances from that midfield. Juan still trying to get up and as a way for him to get back on his feet. We do have a birthday announcement for longtime Chattahooligan Autumn Betts. Today's Autumn's birthday. We wish her a happy birthday as she's watching us on the live stream, Autumn. Thank you for your support of CFC tonight and everyone else tuning in on the live stream today. Juan Hernandez limping, don't know that he's going to be able to continue here. We know Chattanooga does have the depth on their bench to make that sub, but that's a sub they really don't want to make at the moment. One's been a staple part of their midfield, and no one, especially the fans, don't want to see him go. That's a second yellow. You know what? Right? There it is. Richard Taylor sent off. of consolation. The main official went over, talked to his assistants, and they determined it was worth the second yellow and international going to be playing with 10 men for the rest of this game. And Richard Taylor can't believe it. No. Was only on the field for less than 20 minutes and two yellow cards and a send-off. And you know, we got a second glance out of here, Alex, on the live stream. We're a little delayed here. So as it's up on my computer, I got to watch it again, and he came in strong. Didn't look like there was a lot of intent to go for the ball. And that's and the official, though, drawing a lot of ire from the fans here at International Indoor Soccer Complex, but took the time to talk to his assistants before making that decision as Juan Hernandez slowly got up, and International down to 10 men. And as a ref, I think he did the right thing there, talking to his assistants, getting all the angles he possibly could on it before making that call himself. And most of the time, refs will be lenient with that second yellow because they don't want to send anyone off usually. But as you were talking about the tackle there, probably well-deserved, and we saw a second yellow and Nashville down to 10 men now. So it's going to be an interesting remaining 25 minutes, or excuse me, 35, 25 minutes or so. I was told there would be no math. As now International has to equalize a man down. Valenciano. Juan Hernandez, by the way, back on his feet, and he will not come off for CFC. So Bill Elliott, yet to use that first sub of the day. It's going to be interesting to see how Nashville changed their play style due to being down to 10 men. They have had not a lot of possession. They've been very direct in their play style. And being down a player, that's going to benefit that type of play, but it'll also really hurt their morale and all the tire legs for Nashville with those lack of substitutions. That's going to be hard on them. They're going to have to do extra work, and it could turn into a very high-scoring game or an even more physical game than we've already seen. Christian Gomez, Daniel Sassano closed down by João Costa. Jerome Costa keeps the ball alive and Charlie Clark tries to touch it to Juan Hernandez. And Costa wins it back for CFC. 
is Pierre Bouquet, the one-timer to Stephen Rocca. Out to Santiago Moore, back to Rocca. This is something that Chattanooga can do very well now, just focus on possession. They have a man advantage. It's going to make the passing a whole lot easier on them. And they can just possess and essentially waste time doing that. They don't have to push or up a goal. They can relax and produce the chances as they come instead of having to go very direct and very forward like Nashville will probably have to do now. Juan Hernandez. Going back to Everson Lima. Now here's Pierre Bouquet. Steven Rock at the overlapping run. Gives Bouquet the one-time shot. Calls for a handball, but the ref holds onto his whistle, and Gomez tries to clear it out. Valenciano is in possession for Chattanooga. Ball in, looking for, I believe, Santiago Moore. Too much on it, and Stephen Lunny picks it up. <laughs> Chattanooga, after tonight's game, will head down to New Orleans on July 16th to play the Jesters. as Charlie Clark tries to send one in to Juan Hernandez, but it's going to be a Chattanooga throw in. The Jester's in second place in the Southeast Conference Division, right behind Chattanooga. That's going to be a pivotal matchup in this NPSL table if Chattanooga especially can hold on here. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the last match between Chattanooga and New Orleans ended in a draw. So... It'd be, it did, two to two. It'd be a very, very big match for both teams. They both want to pick up those three points from that game. And Chattanooga especially, they can hold on to their lead here, going into that match undefeated. And they'll be tired, yes, but the momentum of the acknowledgement that they, they've just come off a win, they're still undefeated in the league, they're going to have a lot to play for, and they're going to play like they have a lot to play for, and I believe this is going to be a very, very good match. So make sure to tune into that. Juan Costa, the towering header from Daniel Valenciano. He hits the ground afterwards, asking for a ref to see that shove on him. But he's been a lot more of a scoring threat in this game than usual. Always a huge presence in the midfield, but Valenciano has Chattanooga's lone goal on the night and might not be too far from getting a second. I believe that comes with the play style that Chattanooga is playing with tonight. It's very go into the wide areas, cross the ball in, and on aerial balls like that, Luciano is one of the biggest threats Chattanooga has. He's very, very tall, very good in the air, and he can win a header very well. And his positioning is excellent, which led to his first goal. So. Most likely a lot more goals to come from him, yes. And a score update from Atlanta, leading New Orleans 2-1 to right now in the 61st minute. Big game in regards to the NPSL Southeast Conference table. Atlanta sitting in fourth place right now. But that win over New Orleans would just kind of widen the gap a little bit between New Orleans and Chattanooga, but would propel Atlanta up to the top of the table. Field. 
okay. Some physicality from Christian Gomez. He gets called on it. Not happy about it. Here's Juan Sanchez. Good ball into Juan Hernandez who drops it for Charlie Clark. Look to make that final pass to Santiago but can't get there. Here's Ivan Saku. Everson Lima closes him off. Lima gonna start pushing his way upfield. Tries a little, a little something fancy there. Gets it to Juan Hernandez. And Jerome Costa taken down by Daniel Sassano. And a free kick in dangerous territory here for Chattanooga. Yeah, I'm looking to see this ball get whipped in. And one of the very, very tall Chattanooga players getting on to the end of it. Maybe even Valenciano again and trying to get a brace on the night. So this is a very dangerous area for free kick and honestly a very silly foul for Nashville to give away in that area. It's going to be Juan Hernandez taking it. here as our referee is lecturing the two-man wall in front of Hernandez. And he's going to swing it in. Another towering header there. Valenciano ends up having a go at it, but too many men in front of him. He it out, and Stephen Rocca will have it and just send it right back in to Valenciano. A handball is called, and it'll be an international free kick from their own territory. Fourth minute here in Antioch, Tennessee. Foul called on Juan Sanchez. And he, he's appealing to the ref, but that would have been called any other game as well. He, we went up for a header, didn't go straight up, went through the national player. So yeah, easily called by the ref. Easy free kick there. And Gomez is gonna swing it in. And cleared out by Steven Rocca. Juan Costa in a foot race with Diego Gomez to get to the ball. Here's Steven Rocca. Greg Warden in his new spot at right back. Moved over there to make room for Richard Taylor in the defensive midfield, who ended up getting sent off as Everson Lima is down at the 18-yard box. Lima getting up. Looks like it might be some cramping issues. There's the fatigue we've been talking about with this team, and Lima's going to come off. It'll be Damian Gona coming on for Everson Lima in the middle of that CFC defense. It actually appears as though Juan Sanchez will slide into the middle of that defense as Gona plays right back his preferred position and Everson Lima coming off been such a great player for Chattanooga FC could argue the most experienced when it comes to the highest level of soccer played that Chattanooga FC's ever seen here in his first season coach Bill Elliott actually an old player of his Felipe Lavoa I might be saying that last name wrong Played for Coach Elliott at West Florida. Played for CFC a couple of years. Was a friend of Everson Lima's, and that's how Coach Elliott met Lima and brought him on to anchor this defensive line, and he's done such a great job of it this season. 
Yeah, he, he has that experience. He leads that back line. He is the, essentially the captain of that back line. He's playing very well so far this season as well. He's winning headers. He's making good tackles. And we saw just moments ago he's pushing up the field. So he's a very well-rounded defender. And that's a very good thing for Chattanooga to have, especially with the overall class of this defense. But it's Samuel Gona that replaces him, and he'll go shift out to that right back spot as Juan Sanchez slides into the middle. Gaona also in his first season with Chattanooga. Originally from Chile, went to Wingate University. They were the Division II champions in the 2016 season. Santiago Moore turns it and quickly clears it. Going to start seeing the pressure from Inter Nashville ramp up here. Again, down a man, 78th minute, and down a goal as well. And they've got goal scoring threats. Can't count them out yet. And they're definitely going to be pushing hard for this equalizer. You don't want to lose any match, but you especially don't want to lose in front of your home fans. And I believe that will play a big factor into their aggression here trying to get an elite equalizer. That attempted cutback by Chamberlain cut off by Joel Costa and he is flying down that left side but runs out of gas and Frank down tries to clear it but Chattanooga's right back in possession. It's Pierre Bouquet avoids the tackle, drops it back to Costa. Costa floats it in. Charlie Clark's header goes back to Valenciano. Valenciano trying to calm things down here. Out to Gaona, his first real touches of the game. Now back to Juan Hernandez, who's going to switch it. Lift it in for Charlie Clark. Gets the head on it near post, but saved by Stephen Lunny. And that goal. Charlie Clark still escaping him in this game. CFC's leading goal scorer on the year with four. Can he add to that tally in these last 10 minutes? More importantly, can CFC hold on to this lead? It's Juan Hernandez. Over the top to Charlie Clark. Settles it, goes inside to Bouquet, who loses it. And Frank down, taking it upfield out of that international defense. Steven Rocca, nice move to keep control of it. But it's back at the feet of Andrew Chamberlain. And now Juan Hernandez and Juan Costa. Out to Santiago Moore. Has going on the overlapping run, but he's going to go with Charlie Clark. Now Moore at the top of the box. Going to have it himself. Left footed shot over the crossbar. Chattanooga looking for that insurance goal in the 81st minute. And if they do get that second goal, I believe that will be the end of this match. It's going to be hard enough for Nashville being down a man to come back from one goal, trying to come back from two with this little time left. It's going to be very, very difficult. It's doable, but I personally don't see it happening. Jerome Costa. Chattanooga getting numbers here on the counterattack after that red card. Good ball for Charlie Clark. Can he finally get his goal here? Going far post and a little too much on it. Score stays 1-0. He'll definitely be beating himself up after this match. He's had so many great opportunities, and they've all been just wide or just to the keeper, just enough where they can get a hand on it. He's been into the goal scoring uh, areas. He's had his shots, just hasn't found the back of the net yet. And there is time for him to score another. And I believe if he gets another opportunity, he'll definitely be trying to put it in the back of the net. But it just doesn't look like it's his night tonight for a goal. Of course, still over eight minutes left in this match. 
plus however much stoppage time. You imagine we're going to get some after that red card. Here's Andrew Chamberlain drifting over to the left side of the field. Going to go ahead and take it off balance. Flies over the bar. No concern for Philip D'Amico there. D'Amico's had a very solid game tonight. Made a few big saves. Not had too many to make. But a few big saves and has controlled the team from the back as a goalkeeper should and looks very comfortable in the goalkeeping position tonight, which is nice to see if you're a Chattanooga fan. And we're going to have our second substitute of the game today. It's Gabriel Bello coming on for Joan Costa on the left wing. Costa has had a phenomenal game as an attacking outlet for Chattanooga. So he'll come off. Chattanooga with some fresh legs. That's their second sub of the game. They've got one more. Ivan Saku trying to fight off pressure from Soren Juacek. Nashville starting to attack a little bit here. But Chattanooga comes away with it. And Valenciano. Bayo's first touch of the game at the touchline. Keeps it in. He'll take it down the left side. Top of the box for Charlie Clark. Lays it off for Bouquet. A one-time shot. Another absolute laser from a Chattanooga midfielder, but very well saved by Stephen Lunny. Yeah, that was a very, very good save. And a very, very good shot running onto the ball there by Bouquet. He almost found that top corner, and if he would have, I'm sure he would have been absolutely ecstatic with that finish, as would have the Chattanooga fans here. Corner kick for Chattanooga. Post Bouquet can't get to it, but he'll settle it. Drop it back for Hernandez, who's gonna lift it in. Header inside, Clark gets a foot on it, but it's punched out by Lunny. But back at the feet of Hernandez, and Valenciano, excuse me, Juan Sanchez having a go. Leans back a little too much, and that left foot sends it way over the bar. Still 1-0 Chattanooga in the 85th minute. His frustration there. He wanted that shot on target from that, and it just didn't come up for him that time. Daniel Sassano under pressure from Hernandez. Hernandez been all over the place in this game. And he closes off that pass, but it is going to be an offside. And that would have been Charlie Clark's best chance to score. But the right call there, the flag goes up as the deflection off Hernandez finds Charlie Clark in an offside position. Unfortunate there for Clark as well. He's been wanting that goal all night, and he just keeps eluding him. Whether, whether it's been just shy of in the post or offsides in that case. Hernandez leaves it for Gaona on the run up the right side, but it ends up with Daniel Sassano. And here's Sato. And it's starting to get physical here in these last few minutes like we said it would. Ivan Sako, a good move to get past Gona. But that cross in will have absolutely nothing on it. And Chattanooga back with it. Valenciano calmly lifting it to Charlie Clark, who chests it down. Has Santiago Moore making a run. But he's going to go far post, switching the field for Bayo. And out for an international throw. Looks like Bayo was expecting that deflection off the international or international defender. And where 
the defender didn't get a touch to it. It just kind of confused his run for a bit. So, nearly for Chattanooga, but the chance goes begging. Santiago Moore forced down, and they're going to call the foul on Andrew Chamberlain. So a free kick for Chattanooga around midfield. 87th minute in Antioch. Chattanooga holding on one to nothing. An international FC down to 10 men. As we have our third and final sub for Chattanooga coming in, and it is Zeka Fahas. Coming on for Santiago Moore. Zeka is a fan favorite here. And I would not be surprised to see him create or even make some goal scoring opportunities himself. Here's Bayo, top of the box for Zeka. He's going to have his first shot and he's going to score. Zeka's first touch of the game. And there's the insurance goal Chattanooga's been looking for. In the 88th minute, it's Zeka Fejas, his first goal of this 2018 season. Not 30 seconds after he comes on for CFC. You said it, Alex, a fan favorite in Chattanooga, and that right there is why. He can come in and he can change the game for you. About as good of a sub as you could ask for coming off of Chattanooga's bench. Uh, super sub status there. Comes in, 30 seconds on the pitch, scores a goal. You can't ask for much more than that. So Chattanooga in the 89th minute up to nothing. An international down to 10 men, gonna try to see this one out. A good performance from CFC today. They played their game. Don't want to speak too soon. Philip D'Amico has had a fantastic match so far, though, against this really potent Internashville attack. Again, 13 goals on the NPSL season for Internashville. And this Chattanooga back line has really held strong. Yeah, and Nashville has had a lot of attacking chances. And whether it be the back line or D'Amico himself, it, he is preventing a lot of those chances from going into the net. And as you said, he, had a, he has had a solid game tonight. And from the looks of things, don't want to speak too soon myself, but from the looks of things, it looks like he's going to keep a clean sheet on the night. Have another sub coming in for CFC. It's Jonathan Ricketts coming on for Charlie Clark. Oh, that's unfortunate for Clark there. He's, he's wanted that goal so bad he just won't get it tonight. Maybe he'll take that same goal hunger to New Orleans in their next match. So entering stoppage time. We've hit 90 minutes. Chattanooga with the two goal lead. That's Juan Hernandez, drops it for Valenciano, who sends it out to Bayo and Pierre Bouquet. Chattanooga's gonna still try to score here. Bayo going down the goal line, but he's shouldered off the ball by the Nashville defender, and it's a goal kick for Stephen Lunny. It's nice to see Chattanooga still wanting to score that goal. They're already up 2-0, they're up a man, they still want another goal. And it's nice to see, especially from a fan point of view, when your club is still goal hungry, even into these last minutes. Well, you're talking about a Chattanooga team with a lot of new faces, a lot of guys in their first season with the club, and a lot of points to prove here. I'm talking to Coach Bill Elliott before the game, only three guys dressed at this game for CFC were real contributors last season. And that's Zeka, Juan Hernandez, and Soren U.S. check. You had other guys like Charlie Clark that were on the team, but only played a little bit here and there. Charlie Clark only played in one game last season. So only three guys that are real holdovers. So there's a lot of turnover with this new Chattanooga team, but they've gotten a lot of minutes this season. Still undefeated so far, and about to extend that tonight, it seems. And a lot of times, 
some new phases will bring in new challenges, but for the Chattanooga team, judging from their performance last season to this season, the new faces have brought in a lot of good. It's almost, it reminds me a lot of the U.S. Miss National team in their most recent friendlies. They're bringing in a bunch of new players that haven't had many caps for the national team, and they're playing very well, even uh, gaining a draw against a French team that's playing in the World Cup uh, starting tomorrow. So Inter Nashville have an opportunity for a free kick. We're two minutes into stoppage time. You're gonna try to ruin Philip D'Amico's clean sheet. Gomez lifts it in, but it's cleared out easily by Chattanooga. And credit to Nashville, they played this whole game, down 10 men, they never quit. And they really are a good team, a lot of scoring threats. Chattanooga's back line just got the best of them tonight. Yeah, and it's unfortunate to see a team go down a man like that. No one really wants to see that, especially from a fan point of view. You want an evenly matched game. You want something exciting. And exciting Here's Jonathan Ricketts going on goal, and it goes wide. This has been exciting. It's been a very fun match to watch. And I believe we have another sub here. Yeah, more fresh faces coming on for Chattanooga. It's Caleb Cole taking out Juan Hernandez, who's put in a great match tonight, as he has all season for Chattanooga, really controls that midfield. So he's gonna come off getting an ovation from the CFC fans that are here. Like you said, he has just put in a shift tonight. He's played extremely well from the midfield, as he usually does, controlling the game, and the vital part of this Chattanooga team. So Nashville will get an opportunity for a corner kick here. Referee letting play go on, nearing four minutes of stoppage time. Yeah, we're, we're not sure exactly how much stoppage time there is, but with the referee's decision on the red card taking such a long time, I'd say there's quite a few minutes of it. Corner headed out. And back at the feet of Stephen Lunny. Well, World Cup action kicking off tomorrow at 11 Eastern. Russia and Saudi Arabia in the opening game. Sure, with a lot of guys out on the field tonight will be recovering from this match and watching that one as we have our final whistle. At the International Indoor Soccer Complex in Antioch, Tennessee, Chattanooga continues their unbeaten run. It's a very strong performance, dominating performance by Chattanooga tonight. They've controlled possessions from the looks of things. They've, controlled, they've had the majority of the attacking chances, and they've finished their attacking chances. So, overall, good performance by Chattanooga, and they'll be carrying this momentum forward into their away game. So Chattanooga goes to 3-3, three, three, or excuse me, 3-0-3 three, oh, and three on the season. Excuse me, 4-0-3. Four, oh, four wins, zero losses, and three draws, and Inter Nashville drops to 3-3-1. Three, three, and one on the year. Chattanooga will stay at the top of the NPSL Southeast Conference Division and gets a leg up on that Volunteer Shield. Of course, they will see Inter Nashville in Chattanooga on the 4th of July. And keep in mind, Alex, last year you had Chattanooga beat Nashville at home. A stoppage time free kick winner from Danny Reynolds and then lose to them later on in the regular season and eventually get knocked out by them in the playoffs. So this is not the last time Chattanooga is going to see this team and you can bet Inter Nashville will have revenge on their minds the next time they face off. It was a tad different last year. As you said, they won at home and lost on the road. They had that. They have this road game won now. That's going to be nice to have for the momentum going into that home match against Nashville. They know how Nashville plays, and they're going to have that home field advantage. The field's a lot different between here and Finley Stadium. So it's going to be... An interesting match for sure, but I think Chattanooga may have the upper hand on this one. 
So as the CFC players go and greet the fans, thank them for coming out. We thank you for tuning in to the live stream tonight. I'm Lucas Panzica. He's Alex Pullen. The final score from Antioch, Tennessee, Chattanooga Football Club 2, International FC nothing.